The end of meat rationing this weekend was the final step in dismantling the whole wartime system of food distribution. The 14-year story told by this book was over. The ration book has done its job. It's been a long job. Indeed, children up to school leaving age have never known life without the ration book. Now it's only for mothers of the very young that visits to food offices will still be necessary. Those who want to draw welfare food, such as dried milk, orange juice and cod liver oil. Many country food offices, such as this one in Devon, will be closed. At the Ministry of Food in London, officials will turn to other jobs. But the handing out of ration books and cards has ended. Now let's recall something of the story of rationing and de-rationing. May 1949 and clothes come off the ration. One set of coupons less. January 1950 and now it was milk without coupons. Due credit was given to the cows, which with better feeding and breeding had increased production. May 1950 brought the end of the points system. With it came the last of cutting out those precious little squares of paper and the counting and checking that followed. In the same month, just before Whitson, petrol rationing ended, an event that was celebrated by all users of motor transport. Then in October 1952, tea came off. From India, Pakistan, Ceylon, were sent more and more of these crates, meaning more second cups for all. Sweets finally came off points in February 1953. Many wasted no time in taking full advantage of the big stocks, but no one was sent away disappointed. A month later, and you could make an omelette and break as many eggs as you liked for the first time in 12 years. There were more hens in British farmyards than before the war. September 1953, sugar. As much as you wanted left the refineries to go on uncontrolled sale. May 1954, and margarine is unrationed for the first time in 14 years, with a variety of brands to choose from. Butter, too, came off the ration, and grocers displayed bigger quantities than most of us had seen since before the war. And now, two months later, comes the end of meat rationing. In this cattle market at Haywards Heath in Sussex, you see one reason. Country cattle markets are coming into their own again, and so are the crowds of experts gathered round the auctioneer's ring. Their thoughts can now go back to pre-war methods of marketing. After the auctioneer had finished, he was asked about the wartime marketing system. What has happened during the war, particularly on account of the rationing of meat, the whole of the fat stock comprising the cattle, pigs, sheep and cows have been taken over by the Ministry of Food direct at control prices. And as to the future prospects, the auctioneer summed up the outlook in these words. What I think is going to happen is that the butchers can now select uh, their particular grade of stock in order uh, that they can fulfill their orders to their particular customers. Despite increased home produce, meat supplies have been the Ministry of Food's biggest problem. Quantities still come from Australia and New Zealand, South America and elsewhere. From the quayside, the frozen meat is taken to big storage depots, such as this one at Smithfield. From here, it leaves on its way to the shops.
And lastly, the housewife's view, as given to our reporter, Godfrey Talbot. Now we have a representative of all those who, at the weekend, go into the butcher's shop and actually buy the meat. The housewives and all those who do the shopping for the family. What one of them here, Miss Warren from Herne Hill, who does shop for a family every week. Now, what difference is this decontrolling going to mean in your shopping life? Well, the main feature of de-rationing is the advantage of going into any shop. Um, I want to go into being able to buy meat just as I want it. And if I happen to be entertaining at a moment's notice, such an advantage to get into a shop and buy an extra steak or a chop.